G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And in today's episode, I want to introduce you to this fella here. His name is Dino and he is a diamond python. So stick around guys, because this week we're talking about what has to be one of the prettiest pythons out there. So the diamond python is just one of several subspecies of carpet python that we get here in Australia and in parts of New Guinea. So we've got the top end carpet python going across Western Australia, the Northern Territory. You've got the jungle and the coastal carpet pythons down the coast of Queensland and New South Wales. The Southwestern carpet python, the Centralian carpet python. Uh, you've got a bunch of them. But this guy, this guy here, the diamond python is found from the far corner of Victoria out in East Gippsland and up about halfway up the coast of New South Wales where they sort of gradually breed in to the coastal carpet python. But because these guys are found down that southern coast of New South Wales and into Victoria, it gives this species the record of living further south than any other python on the planet. So they've got to be pretty cold adapted. On top of that, they're also found at higher altitudes, further up than any other python in Australia. And a lot of the other pythons that are found at altitude in other parts of the world are pretty close to the equator. So these guys are living pretty high up and pretty far south in some pretty cold places. Living so far south, the diamond pythons had to make some behavioural adaptations to cope with this climate that's really pushing the extremes of what an egg-laying snake is supposed to live with. And one of the things that these guys do a little bit differently to carpet pythons further north is rather than being strictly nocturnal, up in Queensland, the best way to find pythons is driving the roads at night time. Whereas these guys, particularly as they come into and go out of brumation, hibernation over winter, they're fairly diurnal. They'll actually come out and they'll bask on north facing rocks to try and get a little bit of sun. On top of that, this nice black coat, this dark color, obviously helps them warm up a little bit quicker than if they're a lighter colored snake, like you might get further up north. So they might be pushing the limits of what a carpet python's supposed to do, but these guys seem to do it pretty successfully. Another major obstacle that these guys have living so far south is reproduction. Pythons are of course all egg layers. And here in Australia, a lot of our species of reptiles that live down south, like our tiger snakes and copperheads and blue tongue lizards and things, are all live bearing. Live bearing reptiles put up with the cold pretty well. They carry their babies in their guts from warm place to warm place. But when you lay eggs, you're relying on that place being a pretty consistent temperature. Now, when these guys lay their eggs, they wrap around those eggs and they'll protect them, which most pythons here in Australia do. But diamond pythons will also actually actively leave their eggs. They'll go out, they'll bask in the sun, they'll warm up their body temperature, and they'll come back and they'll transfer some of that warmth to their eggs. So they're helping to warm their eggs. Now, while that's certainly interesting, I suppose it's not all that impressive. A lot of pythons, particularly the carpet pythons, are well known to bask in the sun, come back and wrap around their eggs again. But in the 1980s, 1984, a study came out on diamond pythons showing that diamond pythons will wrap around their eggs and actively shiver, up to 50 muscle contractions in a minute. Now, this shivering can actually increase the temperature of their nest up to seven degrees above ambient temperature, just the same way as a mammal, a warm-blooded animal shivering would be. Now, in this paper, they wanted to figure out just how much effort the mother diamond python put into this. And to do it, they measured her exertion by measuring how much oxygen she was using up in the environment. And the female diamond python's oxygen consumption went up by 22 times to produce this shivering. So she's working her little snake butt off to keep those eggs warm, which I think is really interesting. It sort of blows out of the water the old stereotype that these guys are cold blooded, they can't produce any heat. They can, they just don't do it for their normal day to day lives. It's incredibly expensive as far as energy goes, but it gives them that edge to be able to hatch these eggs in an environment that's certainly not ideal. Not like a lot of our other pythons who live out in the arid desert or out in the tropics. These guys are using this ability to thermogenerate, ability to make heat, to warm and hatch these eggs in a pretty adverse environment. It's pretty spectacular stuff. Now, once these eggs hatch, mum's job is done. They disperse from where they hatch and eventually they'll grow up and they'll go find areas to live on their own. Now, like most pythons, these guys aren't what we call territorial. They don't defend an area, but they do seem to have a very definite home range. 
In females, it's about 110 acres. Now, a male might be double that, and his territory or home range will overlap with several females. But this doesn't mean these snakes are actively moving around. They're very energy efficient. And studies have shown that these guys will sit in one spot for about two weeks or so, waiting for something to come past to eat. And if they don't have any luck, they might move 100 meters, find another spot where they think a possum or something is likely to come past, wait again. It's only come breeding season that they'll actively start searching each other out. And where these have home ranges overlap, they'll start meeting up with each other and mating. So once these babies disperse from mum, they grow up, they find their own home range. These guys will grow between two and up to three meters long. There's apparently records of these guys getting even bigger than three meters long, which is a pretty spectacular snake, especially when you bear in mind all this beautiful coloration, this black and white or black and yellow, depending on the individual dappling. And this color, besides the dark undercoat helping them warm up, is a really good example of where they live in this bush forested country along the East Coast where they're blending in with the dappled sunlight at the bottom of the forest floor. A lot of people think a black and yellow or a black and white snake would stand out like a sore thumb. You'd think in the forest you want to be green, but these guys are blending in with that dappled broken sunlight really well. So there you have it guys, that's Diamond Python 101. And I hope that you're able to understand just why I think these guys are such amazing snakes. This beautiful color, the big incredible size and the incredible adaptivity, their ability to put up with a climate and a habitat that other snakes simply wouldn't survive in makes these guys absolutely amazing and I adore them. But anyway guys, as always, I hope you've enjoyed our video and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, or if you wanna help our videos come out more regularly and contribute to our work continuing and getting better, check us out on Patreon. There's a few perks on there where you guys can, can become a part of the Wicked Wildlife team, I suppose. And all those contributions go towards furthering our wildlife message. Last of all, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Please be nice to snakes, and I'll see you next week.